Good evening. Uh, if you have your Bible, open up to Psalm 107. Psalm 107. Psalm 107. Verse 1, Psalm 107, it says, O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Uh, let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy, and gather them out of the lands, from the east and from the west and from the north and from the south. They wandered in the wilderness in a solitary way. They found no city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted in them. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distresses. And he led them forth by the right way that they might go to a city of habitation. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. All right, let's pray and ask God's help in understanding this psalm. Father, thank you for tonight. Lord, I pray now as uh, we open your word, Lord, uh, that you would help us to learn. Uh, help us have open, ready hearts not just for learning also, Lord, but that uh, we would respond uh, positively to your prompting. And, Lord, we would uh, seek to, to praise you and, and honor you, uh, not just with our lips, but with our life. I praise in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Um, the psalmist who wrote this uh, is going to describe at least four different um, scenarios in which folks receive deliverance from God and then he gives as example as far as for men to praise 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 the Lord for and um, <coughs> his recurring theme here is that oh, is is repeated in uh, well we see it in, in primarily in verse 8 it says that oh, oh that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men uh, that's going to be a constant recurring theme in this particular psalm, and then we see the scenarios that he lays out for that. Now you're wondering, well, okay, what, what does that have to do with me? But well, you know, uh, how does this pertain to me? Uh, in the book of Hebrews, Hebrews 13, uh, we're commanded, uh, it's not the only portion of scripture where we're actually commanded to be joyful and to praise God, but uh, Hebrews 13 um, is very specific as far as something that God has an expectation of his children of. And that is, um, verse in 1315 of Hebrews, it says, uh, By him let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks uh, to his name. And so in other words, God has an expectation that we as his children would, would praise him. Now the idea of praise, the actual word itself basically is to, to extol, to lift up, to, to, to put on high. Uh, and it's related a lot, because you'll see it as far as uh, the, when, when, uh, you see words like glorify. Uh, and then it's also included in worship. Uh, though praise is not necessarily the only avenue for worship, but that is a portion of it. Uh, they're all kind of interrelated, but they have differing ideas. Like pray, praise is pretty much to lift up on high, to, to extol. Um, worship literally just means to like to bow down, by your, like basically to get prostrate, to bow, you know, get on your face. And the idea of that is that when you're uh, wor worshiping, is really acknowledging who you are before God, or really acknowledging God for who He is. Is, is the idea with worship. And then praising is that you would not only lift up on high, but it's you're you're giving God basically his his position, what he who he is before all. And then the like the bless or to glorify is you're accurately basically representing who he is before people. And the idea for that is that's what we are created for. Um, in Genesis when God had 
already uh, created the prior to creating man and prior to the beast being brought up before Adam and being named and such, he would look at everything and it said it was very good. But the idea with it is that everything of what his creation was prior to sin coming in would represent who he was. In other words, it glorified him. And so sin was not in the picture. We have an issue here now because of because of sin, uh, after Adam's sin. Uh, and you know, obviously our sinfulness because of that. But we, our original design, uh, God's original blueprint for us is that we are a reflection. Actually, we would be the crown reflection of who He is, and that uh, you know we were made not just a little lower in the angels, but we were made in His image. Nothing could really be said of that of any of the other creation that He had made. That you know we we are, we are actually uh, in God's image, so we 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 are to reflect that. Anyway, so in praising. That is related or part of the concept is that we are basically proclaiming forth this is who God is. And in this poem, in this psalm in particular, God's desire, or the psalmist's heartbeat, really, God through the psalmist, is that we would praise God for his wonderful works to the children of men. In other words, this is the things, now these are only exclusively limited to this, but these are some of the things that we can see, I think that we can relate to, uh, that we, we ought to be able to give thanks to God for. And it is something that I see, I know I, I find myself a lot of times lacking in, that I'll pray to God for things, but I don't always seek to, or I'm not always as quick or ready <laughs> to, um, to praise as I am to sometimes to complain or to uh, get a negative attitude. And so, he says here, verse 2, let the redeemed of the Lord say so, uh, whom he hath redeemed from the land, or excuse me, from the hand of the enemy, and gather them out of, the, out of the lands from the east and from the west and from the north and from the south. They wandered in the wilderness in a solitary way. They found no city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted in them. They were ready to quit and give up. Uh, then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distresses. Uh, now here's how God delivered. Uh, he says, And he led them forth by the right way, that they might go to a city of habitation. And then, the basically the, the command to go ahead and praise. Oh, that, or God's desire. Um, Verse 9, For he satisfieth the longing soul, and filleth the hungry soul with goodness, such as sit in darkness in the shadow of death, being bound in affliction and iron. You know what that is? That's guy in prison. This guy, well, I can't really say necessarily he'd be on death row, but that is a good possibility, but this guy's in prison. Now, it could be for his own wrongdoing. Usually people, when they're in prison... Uh, that's typically the case is because they've done wrong. It isn't the case with everybody because we do know that because of sinfulness in our world there is injustice. But here's a guy in prison. Uh, the longing soul, the, the, uh, the one that is hungry, he sits in darkness and in the shadow of death. Okay, in uh, verse 11 it says, Because they rebelled against the words of God and contempt the counsel of the Most High. Now the <laughs> That's pretty descriptive. Here you got the rebel who's getting his just dessert, basically. He's getting his just due in that he's sitting in prison, he's hungry, you know, and he's basically in the shadow of death and in darkness. So, you know, he brought upon himself his circumstances because of his rebellion and that it says here he contempt the counsel of the Most High. So in other words, he had a low view, or he despised God's admonishment to him. He despised God's command. You know, how many of us have done that at one point or another in our life? God tells us something, thou shalt do this, or, you know, don't do this. Or he brings along a counselor to go ahead and uh, point out an area that we need correcting in our life. And then, uh, you know, usually we just, a lot of times we'll get mad and turn our back to it. And uh, verse 12, 
Therefore he brought down their heart with labor. They fell down and there was none to help. Check this out though. Verse 13. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble and he saved them out of their distresses. Amen. All right, he brought them out of a he brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death and break their bands in sunder. In other words, he gave them deliverance. They cried unto him uh, in their trouble, and he delivered them. And now here his his uh, second ad- admonishment for us. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for the, his wonderful works to the children of men. How many of us would that be our response if God delivered us for the things that we purposely brought on ourselves. Mm, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta lie, that's very convicting because I find myself a lot of times first off wanting to complain when I get my just desserts for things I've done wrong and then two uh, not, not quite as vocal in my complaining stage uh, after God delivers. God's good. God's very gracious. Uh, verse 16, For he hath broken the gates of brass and cut uh, the bars of iron and sunder. Um, fools, because of their transgression and because of their iniquities, are afflicted. Their soul poureth all manner of meat, and they draw near unto the gates of death. Then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble, and he saveth them out of their distresses. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Take note of that. How did their deliverance come about? At least the fools. It was, uh, it says here, uh, through his word. He brings healing through his word. All right, that's, <laughs> that's something that's very, uh, something to take high note of, of the fact. I get deliverance from God's word. It's not to say that he doesn't use human means and such, but the fact is, foundationally, ultimately, it's through his word that I get, I'm going to get my deliverance from. And uh, it says, Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. And let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving and declare his works with rejoicing. Okay? We're quick to want to, at least human nature is. I'm not particularly targeting anybody here or anything like that. And that's what I'm trying to do. Uh, I'm not trying to play Holy Spirit conviction everybody but I'm just saying human nature is typical that we are quick to want to go ahead and speak evil we're quick to want to complain and we're quick to want to have our own way and not really be submissive to God's plan or even really to want to acknowledge the fact that I really need God you know Uh, I'm not as strong as I think I am I'm not as smart as I think I am I'm not as uh, whatever as charismatic or such whatever whatever adjective you want to use to be able to describe yourself or how you think of yourself uh, in that manner. And the fact is, I am what I am because of the grace of God. If there's any benefit, there's any good, if there's any value, it's because of God's, what God has placed and what he has endowed and what he has basically entrusted uh, towards me. And as I yield, uh, we end up being a blessing. We end up seeing the benefit of that in not just our life, but also in the life of others as he uses us. Um, and so for us to go ahead and to want to complain or to want to be stubborn, stiff-necked, uh, to where we uh, don't allow his working in our life is, is really foolish. We end up putting ourselves in a position where we would find ourselves as some of these that they would be in bondage, uh, almost in the shadow of death, uh, that they would be in distresses, uh, crying out. Uh, not that we shouldn't cry out, by the way. Not that, At least they had the smarts enough to to know where to turn, as we see here, uh, as to go and cry out to God to seek deliverance from Him, because He's the one only really that can deliver us. Uh, verse 23, and then they that go down to the sea in ships that do business in great waters, these see the works of the Lord and His wonders in the deep, for He commandeth and raiseth the stormy wind, which lifteth up the waves thereof. They mount up to the heavens, they go down again to the depths, their soul is melted because of trouble. Uh, they reel to and fro and stagger like a drunken man and are at wit's end. And then, then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble and he bringeth them out of their distresses. And here's how he delivered them. He said, he maketh the calm, he maketh the storm a calm so that the waves are still. 
Uh, then are they glad because they be quiet, so he bringeth them into their desired haven. Uh, these aren't necessarily gentlemen that are in rebel standing, or they're not purposely uh, fighting against God as the others that we've seen described as the fool, or the, the, the one that's in bondage and in prison, uh, or even the one that uh, were wandering in the wilderness. But rather, these are just, they're men... It could be conjectured that probably they're going about their business, they're going about their way, you know, they're maybe in a pathway, and they come into distresses that just happen to be. Um, and so they find themselves in a storm. They find themselves in a time of trouble. Now, they may not have incurred it upon themselves. Uh, that doesn't seem implied here. It just seems that they are going about their business, and then they run into trouble. They run into a storm. And they cry out to God, and God delivers them. This is a recurring theme. <laughs> we can't already see. Uh, and then God used, basically, he just calmed the storm for them, made it easy for them, to, and then he brought about what they were already planning as far as their desired end and what they had as their original pursuit. Um, and then to cry out again, verse 31, Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Verse 32, let them exalt him in the congregation of the people and praise him in the assembly of the elders. He turneth rivers into wilderness and the water springs into dry ground, a fruitful land into barrenness for the wickedness of them that dwell therein. He turneth the wilderness into a standing water and dry ground into, wash, into water springs. And there he maketh the hungry to dwell uh, that they may prepare a city for, habit, for habitation and sow the fields and plant vineyards which may yield fruits to increase. He blesseth them also, so that they are multiplied greatly, and suffereth not their cattle to decrease. Again, they are minished and brought low through oppression, affliction, and sorrow. He poureth contempt upon princes, and causeth them to wander in the wilderness where there is no way. Yet setteth he the poor on high from affliction, and maketh him families like a flock. The righteous shall see it and rejoice, and all iniquity shall stop her mouth. Whoso is wise and will observe these things, even they shall understand the loving kindness of the Lord. All right. The last portion of what we just finished reading, basically from verse 32 to the end of verse 43, um, not as the other aren't descriptions of the character of God, but God delights in being able to bless. Um, go to 1 Corinthians very quickly. I'm going to start in verse 23, um, just so we get the context of what I'm about to read. What book? 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Um, but we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews, a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks, foolishness. Uh, but unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ, uh, <coughs> Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. Uh, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise uh, men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called, uh, but God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, and God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound uh, the things which are mighty, and the base things of the world, and the things which are despised, hath God chosen, yea, and things which are not, to bring to naught things that are. Now here's the express purpose, uh, that no flesh should glory in his presence. And then uh, verse 30, but of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who, is, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption that according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. Okay. 
this last portion, verse 30, 32 to 43, is the best description, I think, uh, or anecdote, I guess you can say. It's maybe not the best, but it's one of the, one, a really good one for that where we read in 1 Corinthians that no glory or no no flesh should glory in his presence. Here we have description of things that would seem like, wait, this is God. Okay, you have land that is going to be, or rather that is fruitful, being turned into desert, into being in the waste, and then waste land that is basically good for nothing, being turned into extremely fruitful. And then God brings the rich man down, and he brings basically the poor man up. He blesses him. I, I, okay. This isn't to say that it's it's sinful to be rich, you know. I mean, it's not something I guess to be desired to be poor necessarily, um, but God does bless, and He is able to go ahead and turn that which is what we would look upon and see as being great and blessing and rich to a waste to nothing, and He's able to make that which is wasteland, uh, which we would think, okay, there's no hope. How can anything come out of this and make it really rich and fruitful? And he's able to go ahead and deliver the man that is in bondage. The man that was a fool, that was a rebel against God, if he would cry out unto him. The man that's going about his way, uh, basically in his own business, minding his own business, that runs into trouble. Um, and then those that are in a solitary path, those that are in the wilderness, those that are wandering, that are hungry, that have no hope, he's able to deliver, he's able to bless, and he's able to bring into abundance. And it tells us here, verse 43, uh, Whoso is wise and will observe these things, even they shall understand the loving kindness of the Lord. And God, God's point, God's desire here, this is, the, the point of this is that we would learn not just from the anecdotes of the men that were described here, but of the character of God. This is describing who God is. He's good. Amen. Okay? And he blesses. He loves to bless. Key thing is, do we praise him for that? Do we acknowledge that in our life? And then do we actually seek him? Uh, in other words, are we seeking to go to him in our distresses and our troubles? Uh, do we have him as basically our first resort rather than our last resort? Or do we seek to go ahead and rest in our own wisdom and in our own strength and our own abilities, uh, so to speak? Do we, um, the psalmist's desire here that he keeps repeating here is that, oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Um, Hebrews 13, I mean, it's not the only other passage, but Hebrews 13, we are, we are to command. We are commanded. We are to bring. God expects. God desires. This is his longing, that we would praise him. We would lift him up. Amen. We would make him known. Okay, that's what we're created for. Uh, created into Christ Jesus, not just unto good works, but a part of that would be in praising God. And so tonight, I want to ask, how is our praise, how is our praise for God in our life? Do we acknowledge his goodness in our life? Uh, do we seek it out? Do we seek opportunity to be able to go ahead and praise before, not just the brethren, but also the unbelievers? Um, a, a thing I think a lot of times we overlook and we miss, um, I know a lot of people can misconstrue and, and then attack. I mean, there's a lot of people that hate God and have a wrong view, a twisted view of him. They think, oh, he's out to get them, and then they blame him for things that went wrong in their life or things that you know are bad in their life. And because of either sinful choices that they've chosen to make and then they reap the result of that, or because of just injustices that were actually were legitimate against them, and then they say to God, well, you could have protected me, you could have done this or that, but you didn't. You know. And the truth is, uh, he does allow us a free will. And if he were to deal with sin as swiftly <laughs> uh, as we desire and as we have seen him at times, uh, we would we would have to be dealt with as well. You know, our sin would have to be dealt with as well, and we, we wouldn't survive that. And so, um, God does allow that's long suffering, so that 
men would repent and turn to him, and that's his desire. Um, but do we, I guess getting back to the point with regard to that, do we, uh, in our opportunity and our sphere of influence with the unbelievers, seek to praise? Um, they only know, I guess, in part what they're exposed to and what they seek out. And if they don't actually seek out God, um, I would desire personally as far as my exposure to them to be an accurate exposure. Uh, there's so much misinformation out there in this world right now. Uh, I mean, obviously, especially concerning the Lord, that um, it'd be hard to come by. It's not impossible to come to truth if you have a desire and a yearning. I mean, God is very clear that if you respond to light, He's going to give you more light. Uh, but there's so many lies out there, it's hard to tell as far as, okay, what, what is true and what isn't. Outside of from the Holy Spirit intervening and Holy Spirit giving light and understanding to a person. And so let, let's seek to let's seek to be a clear uh, a clear light to accurately, properly represent God uh, by our praise. Not the only aspect, but tonight let's, let's seek to please God and then accurately represent Him by are praising Him for His goodness in our life. Let's pray. Father, thank You for tonight. And Lord, I pray that uh, You help me be uh, somebody that clearly uh, help us, not just me, but help us here to be ones that clearly uh, praise You and then seek to uh, please You in our life and that uh, we uh, would be counted not just as faithful, Lord, but also that that uh, you, you'd be well pleased uh, with how, with, basically with the, the fruit of thanksgiving, with, with the praise of our lips towards you. I praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, prayer requests.